What's up, everybody? It's AJ with eTrailer.com. Today we're going to be checking out the Thule Tram. This is a ski and snowboard carrier that goes onto your existing bike rack. So it's going to sit in the cradles of our Thule hang style bike rack and then allow us to carry these skis and snowboards. Let's check it out. So it may seem like an unorthodox way of carrying your skis and snowboard, but it's actually pretty practical. If you already have the bike rack and the hitch on your vehicle, you just throw this on top of there and you can carry them. It beats buying a roof rack system, then the ski and snowboard carriers separately, installing those every time you go to do this. It's much easier to just throw a bike rack in, throw this on top, strap it in, and go. Not to mention, if you already have a roof box and a roof rack on your vehicle, you don't have to decide if, hey, do I want to carry the skis and snowboards up there or stuff the luggage in here? You can actually have the box on there, load it with your luggage, keep all your room in your vehicle because you're gonna have your skis and snowboards out here on the outside. Also, makes it easier when you're loading up the skis and snowboards instead of opening the door, hopping up there, loading it in the box and trying to reach up there and get it or getting a step to do that. You can easily load it right here from waist level, set up and go. So before I show you how it works, let's make sure it works for you. I'm gonna measure from the center of this cradle, this cradle, so we can get the spacing. Looks like it's about five and a half inches apart. So that's something to keep in mind if you already have a bike rack, you want those cradles five and a half inches apart so this fits in there. And most hanging styles allow you to adjust the cradle so you can move them and get it to fit that. Let's see how it operates. It has a locking system right here, so you can lock these closed so nobody can mess with it when you're not around. It secures your skis and snowboards. You can also get a cable lock with this and it'll work and wrap around so that nobody can take this off the bike rack as well if you want to, but that's sold separately. Another option with the lock is you can get it keyed alike, so if you do have a Thule box on your roof, you can get it all the same cores and same keys, so you only have to use one. You don't have to have like five keys in your pocket just to unlock all your accessories. Once it's unlocked, all you have to do is push this big button here, which is big enough so if you do have gloves on, you can just hit it with your palm and it pops open. Stays open on its own. Now you will notice that I don't have to hold on to the skis and snowboards when I'm loading it or unloading. It's got this down here. This kind of puts pressure on both sides and will catch the bindings on there. That way you don't have to have one hand holding the ski here or the snowboard here and then you're loading this ski up and you gotta try and close this while trying to bear hug it and get it closed. You can let it go, get in place where you want to and then just close it and lock it up. Another thing I wanna point out is the bindings on the skis. Every ski is gonna be a little bit different, so it does depend on your binding. Clearly, I can't leave it like this. I'm not gonna shut it on the front of these bindings, so I will have to lift it up a little bit. And that's why I'm not doing them back to back. It'll be too thick. I don't wanna push that or damage the bindings at all, so I'll just kinda of lift them up a little bit. About there, looks like it's a better point for it to close down on. And I do have to hold it with my forearm a little bit. But it's not that bad. And then I'll go ahead and close the arm. So it's not that bad, but just pointing that out, that's why we weren't doubling back to back because it won't fit, it's too thick. But it fits like this just fine. Thule says that it holds up to four snowboards or six skis. You can see that's not necessarily the case here. I mean, I guess it depends on what gear you have, but you can see the snowboard takes up more than half of this carrier here. And the only way we got in two of the skis is because we could double them up like this because the bindings were thin enough to do that. As you saw earlier, we can't do that on this side. So we had to do individual skis. So it's, it still works. So it still holds three pairs of skis and one snowboard. That's still quite a bit that's not in your vehicle or on your roof. So just really think about what gear you have and what you can fit. To give you that exact measurement, so you can measure your gear, we're gonna go from the very end to the very end. And it looks like you have 15 and 5 eighths inches of space in here for your gear. The whole thing is made out of a sturdy steel construction 
So you don't have to worry about leaving it out in the elements just like your bike rack. You don't have to worry about the snow or the salt from the roads getting on there and deteriorating. It's going to be fine. You can leave it out there. It also has a weight capacity of 165, which is going to be plenty for skis and snowboards. I also want to point out the rubberized inside here. It's not going to bother your gear at all. You can push in on it. You can see it's really soft. It's not going to scratch anything. I can actually just go ahead and slam my hand in there and show you. It's fine. It doesn't hurt. So if it's not going to hurt my hand, it's not going to hurt your stuff. It's the same way with the pads at the bottom. They're nice and soft. They're not going to scratch up your gear. Plus, they give it a little bit of a grip. When you saw this was open, you saw it didn't slide immediately down or move very much. That's because it's also is rubberized and kind of grips it, so it's not going to move a whole bunch. It will slide down here and hit the binding, but it's not going to go any further than that, and nothing's going to get damaged. Also, at the end, you have this kind of almost like a hook. And that's good so when it is loose and something does lean out, it's not going to lean out and fall right away. It'll lean and catch here. So just in case you lose grip of it. Yakima offers a similar version of this called the Hit Ski. I just want to point out some differences between them so that help you judge which one would work better for you or not. First up, this one has a spacing of just two cradles here. So you don't need a, even though we have a four bike hanging carrier, we only needed a two. So it would fit on there. With the Yakima one, you'd need all the space of a four bike carrier. So that kind of limits you on what you already have and you buy that to go on there. You really need a four bike. If you don't have that, it won't work for you, but this one will. Another thing I'd like to point out is this down here. It attaches at the base of the bike rack as well. So you just turn these knobs here on the back. It gets it nice and tight. That prevents sway back and forth and really just reinforces it to stay here. I really like that addition to it the most because it just makes it secure. You saw me shaking it back and forth. There's no question that this is going to last as you're going down the road. Probably the best part of the tram is that you don't have to hold the snowboard in place while you're loading. There's some difficulty loading up the Yakima one because you have to hold it down here Try and load this, hold this one in place while you're adding the other one in. This one's kind of hands-free. You can set it in there. You see it stays in place just fine. I can load up the second set of skis and then close it. Far easier to load and unload. And probably the best thing about the tram is that the hit ski has two of these. So that means when you open them, there's nothing holding the snowboard in place. With this, this bottom bar here is always here. So it's loaded and helps keep your gear in place when you're loading it up or taking stuff off. All those features are really good, but how hard is it to use? Let's check out how I got it installed. First thing we're gonna do is set it in the cradles. Make sure it's kind of aimed in the middle because next we're gonna attach that bar that attaches it to the bike rack. So we wanna make sure that's in the center so we can run the bolts through. So I'm gonna leave it like that. Then I'll hop down here. Gonna put this back plate behind the bike rack and run our bolts through the holes in the front. So got that one there. I'll go ahead and get it started so that it helps hold in place. And just to be clear, we're going through these bolts in the center of the bar not these four holes on the outside. That's not the ones you run the bolts through. So you're going to tighten them down evenly. And you can kind of see how it pulls in on the tram, holding it tight against the frame. Back up on top, we're going to just strap it down like we would any other bikes. Now you will notice that it sticks up a bit from these cradles, and that's only because what we attach down here and tighten it down to the frame of the bike rack is gonna align this a little differently. So it's okay to stick it up there. Remember, it's secure down here. So you can still strap it down like normal up here and you won't have any issues. So just try and get each one tight. Move the cradle a little bit on that one. So let's get that back. And then you're good to go. Now it's time for the shake test. Shaking back and forth, you see movement in the bike rack, but you don't see any movement in the tram, in the cradles, or here. That's because it's secured all around. It's not gonna move, so you know it's gonna stay exactly where it is while you're going down the road. Well, I think that about does it. Thanks for hanging out, and I hope this helped.